Welcome to Huda's Career Chat. Uh, this is the final episode for the summer, and then I will see you again in mid-September. But I hope you have enjoyed what I have shared so far and are looking forward and excited about the coming summer Huda's Career Chat. I will try to make it more uh, interactive, but remember that this is the pre-recorded pre or the recorded session. If you do join Huda's Career Chat virtually online live, uh, it is definitely more interactive. It is definitely uh, more alive and you get to ask your questions uh, face to face online or even type them if you'd rather not show your face. So there is more fun interaction in the live ones. But welcome to the recorded Huda's Career Chat and I hope you enjoy what I have to share with you today in our final summer episode. As usual, I try to share um, some tidbits about questions that I got asked in the past week. And this time it's about a gap year. With online learning becoming a reality, a lot of the students are talking about taking time off until the following years because they don't want to miss out on the face-to-face um, -face live university experience. And so I have had a lot of questions about gap years. While not gap years is not is my specialty, it is part of the uh, career professional development that I have completed in order to help my clients find their career direction. So here it is, the horror. Uh, my parents won't approve a gap year. And this is one of the major issues that arise when students are considering gap years. As a parent, I understand the concerns and I'm gonna share some of you them with you. If you are a parent and you have those concerns, please understand that they are legitimate concerns. If you are a student whose parents are putting you through this, understand that your parents love you, they care about you, and that is why they are concerned. Some of the things that parents wanna know about gap year is what will you do with your time? So you're gonna take a whole year off, 12 months, and do you have any plans to go further? So I tell my clients, my young clients, in that uh, for yourself, as well as for your parents' sake, you need to let them know what are your plans. You need to have some sort of plan is that, the concern is you're gonna be watching TV all day, or you're gonna be playing video games, or you're gonna be hanging out at the mall. So we want to know as parents what you're going to be doing with your time and for you. So what kind of exploration are you going to be doing? Preparing yourself for uh, opportunities or for thoughts like that, reflecting on what you're going to do in that gap year will make it a lot easier for your parents to accept that. Yeah, okay, a gap year makes sense. Another thing that parents want to do know is what will you benefit by taking time off for that one year? Whether they're, your parents want you to work right away or hope, are hoping you would continue on to uh, college is, is, up, is, is uh, where the differences would vary among many parents. But what is important is that they want to know, are you just going to be, again, sitting at home? So what kind of benefits are there going to be from um, not going to work right away or to school right away? What I suggest with my clients they do is think about what explorations they have been wanting to do, but school have limited them from doing that. In the past, it was travel, and a lot of students took gap years so they could travel, and there were a lot of benefits to traveling, you know, being independent, being in charge of your life, where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, how you're going to do your laundry in a foreign land. So the benefits were amazing. Um, right now, um, by staying home and with the pandemic, we have been trying to support students in that, okay, you want to take a gap here, but are you going to spend it online surfing the net or on social media? At the, my perspective is there are a lot of opportunities online, lots of volunteer opportunities that can still be done within the safety precautions that are recommended. Uh, so some benefits would include uh, developing new skills, working with uh, animals, for example, if becoming a vet 
or an animal caretaker in a zoo. These could be developed in a gap year. So lots of opportunities to be considered and explored. And once we have a plan of what can be done, what can be explored, then the parents start to understand the value of a gap year. Another concern that a lot of parents have, and uh, I would have had one of those if my child decided to take a gap year, is would that year turn into many gap years? So you see the logic of that, that the concern is we want you as parents to be independent, but at the same time, uh, we understand that you need time to get organized and figure out your life, but we don't want this to be a lifelong dependency on us. Another question is, will you ever go back and complete your education? And this is something that particularly for parents who wish that their, students, their young children complete a university education. Um, there is that belief in that if you don't continue right away, you may never go back. Uh, while in the past, I agreed with this statement, nowadays uh, there are a lot of uh, statistics that show us that taking a gap year actually might motivate you to go back or to go to university and complete it with a passion and motivation because now you know what you want rather than joining a program right out of high school when you're uncertain about the value of the program to yourself. So, but again, having a plan would show your parents that yes, I am gonna complete my education and this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take these 12 months off, but in the meantime, I'm gonna to apply to the university and hopefully by then I will know what program I really want to complete. However, and I always call, caution my clients in that, if you are sure you don't want to go back to university, not in the foreseen future anyway, you need to have an honest conversation with your parents about how completing an educa university education or even a college education is not for you and that you would foresee yourself um, working right away and developing skills as you work. So at that point, you would commit to maybe taking um, a couple of courses to get you to find a job that pays well, or you can start with a job that does not pay well, but show them that you are committed to it and that you will go get ahead, you feel you will get ahead in it because it is the right fit for you. So definitely lots to think about, lots to share. And I've got one more question that the parents will ask. Will they have to support you financially all your life? Uh, no parents want to do that. Parents want to know that they help their children stand on their feet. They also want to know that they're going to be done with that pretty soon, particularly um, as you get into your 20s. So again, having a plan and showing them that the idea is not to say stay on their um, uh, financial uh, agenda uh, is, is what you is a plan of yours you know gaining an independence financially is one of your part of your plan so in short i would say if you show your parents that you are serious you explain to them that your reasons for not continuing your education or finding a full-time job right away is because you want to start, reflect and make sure that the next step you take in life is the right one for you you show them that you have a plan and you talk about some possible actions that you are considering to do during the gap year, then I assure you that the parents would approve your gap year. So these are some thoughts from questions that I had this week about the gap year. Pretty quickly now I'm gonna to move to your having your questions answered. As I mentioned, in our live sessions, it's more interactive and you are asking your questions right on the spot. This is a recorded session and I will share with you the questions that I received this week. What is the best way to find an internship as a college student? This is a great question. 
and particularly for someone who is looking for an internship for summer next summer. Yes, we are in August, I know, but it's not too early to start asking yourself this question. It's actually the perfect time. And I will tell you why. This is because I believe there are nine to 10 steps that you need to do, and you don't wanna be doing them last minute in order to find the ideal internship that works best for yourself. So the first step would be to make a list of the top 10 companies of your choice. This is what I encourage my clients to do. If they're coming to me saying, I'm looking for an internship, well, tell me, what companies do you wanna work for? I will ask them and why, but I don't stress it. I do want them to just say, okay, I wanna work for this company or that company and without any judgment. And so uh, I will sometimes ask why, but the why is not as important as for me to know as for them to know. So once they list the top 10 companies, I encourage them to read about them in the news, check out their website, check out their social media. Reading about companies will help you see if you identify with that company's values, because that is important. Because if a company has strong values that you don't share, you're not going to enjoy working there. Once you've read about these companies, I ask to say, I asked you to choose the top five companies from these, the STEM list, because 10 companies is a bit overwhelming to continue working on. So we narrow them down to the top five, because now you've done the research, you're not just amazed by the name Nintendo or Google or, um, we'll just add Microsoft there, but you have researched those companies and you know exactly what they do and whether you want to work for them or not. Once you've chosen your five temp companies, now you have to find out if they actually do offer internships. And you can do that just by checking their job, uh, their career site. But more than that, you can also reach out to people who work there. So this is the time to start connecting with people who work in the companies. Typically, I recommend LinkedIn. Uh, but if you're not on LinkedIn, you can just go to the company's website and reach out to um, the people who work in the departments that you think are of interest to you. The reason we know I'm saying reach out because sometimes companies may not post their internships on their website. They may have them in other uh, job search websites, such as Indeed. So by reaching out to someone in the company and say, hey, do you offer internships? They will say, well, our internships are listed on that website. Go ahead and look for them, particularly if you can help find them in the career section of the company. So there you go. You are already getting started. But guess what? We are already on the fifth step. So this is not something you do in one day. That's why I recommend starting as soon as possible for next summer. So once you find these internships, you go figure out if you have the skills for these internships. So this is number five. So you have to figure out if they have the skills for these internships. So you have your resume, or at least you know what your skills you have, and then you go and you find, oh, so these are the internships they offer. Do I like working in those internships? And do I have the skills for those internships? And you find out that you do, then you are in good shape. If you find out that there are a few skills that you don't have, but may be able to develop over the winter, then this is perfect time for you to start doing that. And that would be, of course, the next step, number six, which is if you realize that you do not have the required skills for the offered internship, then you know that you need to develop them. The seventh step is networking networking to find these um, opportunities for at first, but also networking to get your foot in the door. So by reaching out to people to discover who hires and if they can introduce you to them, and then look for opportunities for coffee chats. These coffee chats can help you get to know them. They can help them get to know you. 
and then bit by bit you get closer to the right person who is hiring and they may or may not like you but that would be the um, opportunity for you to share who you are without the pressure of a formal interview i know particularly with young people the idea of an interview can be a little bit um, uncomfortable and so definitely networking through your um, the company you want to work for will allow you to start to loosen up and figure out oh i know what this company is all about i should be fine now once you've done all of that if the top five companies do not work for you for whatever reason if you've done all your research then you expand your research back to the to the other five that we took out out of the top 10 and you start again from the beginning and there is a possibility that you've done your research and have gone through all the steps for the top 10 list. Then you have to return to step one and start with a new top 10 list. Typically, I find my um, clients rarely have to do that if they have done their homework and if they actually give themselves time to explore, they will find the job that they're looking for within the first top 10 companies particularly if all 10 companies offer internships. So that was a good question. And now I move on to the next question. What do I need to do to become a teacher? This is a good question. Uh, if you are in high school, uh, then um, the most um, expected route is for you to get a Bachelor of Education. In high school, you can start you can start building teaching experience by tutoring, by volunteering for the classrooms, and in the summer, um, leading summer camps, or even working part of the tutoring companies that are out there. There are many of them, um, but uh, once you graduate from high school, the most logical route would be to go to university and finish a bachelor of education degree. What I recommend uh, with uh, becoming the teacher, taking the teacher route, is that if you know what subjects you want to teach or even what grades, then you can specialize as have a minor in your bachelor's degree in that specialty. This will make it easier for you to find a job because you will um, be clear on your path to the people you apply to in that, oh, okay, she wanted to teach math, so she took a minor in math or he wanted to teach early childhood education like kindergarten and so he specialized in early childhood uh, so just choosing a minor as part of your major bachelor of degree of education and taking extra courses uh, is, is definitely a way for you to get ahead as a teacher and to uh, of course uh, allow yourself the opportunity to expand your knowledge about the subject you would like to teach or a population you would like to teach. Definitely recommend internships, but most programs and uh, actually will offer an opportunity for internships. So look for universities that offer that. So if you have a university that offers a Bachelor of Education degree in four years with no opportunity for practicum or very minimum opportunity for practicum versus one that is could be a little bit more expensive but offers a three to six months of practicum that I would definitely um, uh, advise that you take the other one, the one that offers more um, practicum opportunities because there will be experience built right there and it'll be easier to find a job once you graduate. Why do some summer internships cost money? Summer internships that cost money usually offer um, a lot more than just show up and uh, work. They offer training and um, the ones that I am aware of have uh, are sort of a gap years actually now that we talked about gap year, but you can do only summer ones. Uh, these will take you on a trip. So you would be doing business education, let's see, or a business internship, let's say in France, in Paris. So you're, um, they will work with companies to offer you these opportunities. The companies will be offering training for you to learn on the job. 
uh, and the tour com or the tour or the educational uh, company that takes the money from you will arrange for um, um, place for you to sleep for some meals and sometimes also they will organize um, touristic tours for you to learn about the community you are living in and that's why they would charge money they are typically done and um, some of them um, are open to anyone who applies but some of them are also competitive just like the regular other regular summer internships and so it's not enough to pay money but also you do need to uh, compete so that have some basic requirements as well but that's really why they charge money because they offer a training they offer um place to sleep place to eat some meals i mean and so on Do you agree that hiring managers make up their minds very quickly? I love these questions because yes, that's why I say, uh, when you write your resume or your cover letter, make sure you grab the hiring manager attention within the first paragraph. Make sure you stand out because yeah, they, uh, I've talked to some recruiters and hiring managers is that they spend 30 seconds sometimes on a resume and cover letter. So if they read it, it doesn't stand out, it doesn't catch their attention, they have moved on. Um, so do they make up quickly? It's the nature of their job. You know, you have an opening with thousand applications. They need to quickly uh, be able to um, skim through these applications because they too have a deadline to meet and that they need to uh, hire someone to get the job done. So yes, I do agree that they may map, but it's it's the nature of things. And then the onus of, uh, on, on, on the applicant is to say, okay, if I had 30 seconds to read my resume, would I, would I read it? And what, what would stand out of it? If I had 30 seconds to read my cover letter, what would I like about it? And if there's nothing that stands out as different, then um, definitely it's time to check uh, your cover letter and your resume. And I'll give you an example. Um, with the cover letter, one of the most mundane sentences to start your cover letter with is, Dear hiring manager, I am writing to you regarding this role. Like, don't ever start a cover letter with that. Uh, just get and dive in right away into your reasons for writing but um yes i do agree so this is all the time i have for today for questions before i let you go as usual i like to share a quotation that caught my attention and encourage the weekly reflection until we meet next time um, this time it's probably going to be a monthly reflection because i'll see you again in september but here's my quote for this week. If you can stand in space just for a little while, a new door will open, or you'll be able to see in the dark after a while. You'll adjust. This is a quote by Jane Campion, and it's, it's a beautiful quote because for me, again, it connects to that gap here, but really it connects to our situation nowadays with the pandemic. If you are feeling lost, if you are feeling uncertain about the future, allow yourself to stand in space. This is a beautiful picture of the water, but really just sitting in your garden or on your balcony or even um, uh, just in your bedroom and thinking about um, what your life is all about and what have you done so far uh, and relaxing and appreciating what you have, um, you will find new doors will be opening or you will be able to see through what is bothering you. And that's what is the value of the gap here. It's really about standing in space for a year and allowing yourself to figure out what you want to do next. I appreciate you showing up today. I want to thank you for showing up. And um, until I see you um, in the fall, uh, stay focused, keep moving forward, and uh, best of luck in. Um, your gap year or in finding your next internship.